Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylin, and today we are doing a get ready with me using all indie brands, an entire full face of indie brands. Indie brands are one of my favorite things to do makeup wise. I love them so much. I just think the quality is frankly superior most of the time to drugstore and prestige products in my opinion. Not always, but a lot of times. Um, and today I just woke up feeling in a terrible mood and um, some things happened that furthered that further bad mood. <laughs> so um, yeah, I decided I need to use some makeup that's going to brighten my mood a bit today. And so Indie Brands, that's what I turn to for and that's what we're using today. And hopefully you can get ready with me or watch and uh, are having a good mood yourself today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get too far into the video, if you have not already, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. I upload videos twice a week. It is totally free to subscribe and I would love to see you back again on the channel in the future to talk all things makeup with me in the comments. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into all of these lovely indie makeup products. All right, so I am starting with the Nimia License to Glow Serum. Um, Nimia is an independently owned brand by Nikki Tutorials, the influencer. And I'm not gonna lie, part of the fun of this product is that it's blue. <laughs> Truly, it is. But if it were blue and it weren't a good product, I wouldn't care about that. Um, it only adds to the product because it is genuinely a good product outside of that. Um, I really do see this hydrating my skin, evening out any dry patches, making it smooth. A good primer for makeup outside of it being a serum. Um, and yeah, the blue just adds to it. It doesn't have an overly crazy, actually, it really doesn't have any scent. Unlike the setting spray, which I really despise from this brand, this is a lovely product. Um, yeah, and I've been enjoying it a lot as a primer lately. For foundation from ColourPop, this one of the only um, foundations I think I have from an indie brand. This is the Pretty Fresh Hyaluronic Hydrating Foundation. This has been my favorite foundation lately, truly, like, in my whole collection, I've been reaching for this the most on a daily basis. It's just such a good shade match for me. Mine's in Fair 30N. Um, it really helps neutralize the redness I've got going on. And it's not too cakey. I'd say it's a medium coverage. Um, you can build it up a little bit, but the coverage is good enough that I feel pretty happy with one layer to get a natural finish. It's very lightweight. It's not too heavy. You can't feel it. And yeah, like I said, it just does a nice job giving you an even coat of everything while still giving you a natural finish and keeping it really skin looking. Um, and maybe part of that is because I do like to pair this with the Nimia and I feel like that does help all of my foundations look a bit more natural and not too cakey, but I've also used this foundation with some other like blurring primers and in conjunction with other things other than the serum and I still feel like I get that same really nice finish. So I usually, um, do most of the work with my hands these days just to give myself, first of all, a light layer everywhere. And then I usually take whatever is left and just kind of assess like if there's any spots where I have a bit more redness or like some scarring or anything that's coming through. I'll just use the excess to go back and maybe target those specific areas. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. And then I do usually when I'm done with all of it, even though I do like, like I said, majority of the work with my hands, I'll still go in with some kind of a brush just because sometimes what I think I see in my mirror and what I see later when I'm out and about are two different things. So I find just taking a brush or if you prefer a sponge and just doing like a nice once over everything just make sure you didn't accidentally miss any spots as far as like blending is concerned. And it can help to smooth out like if you had just a little extra product anywhere. Yeah, it can just make it look more even, more even and not streaky. 
I'm also using the Matching Pretty Fresh Concealer. I think, again, I'm, I want to say this might be the only indie brand concealer that I have. I struggle a lot with um, indie brands and just their complexion products. You know what? I do have, this is an indie brand, Ritual Defeat Luminous Elixir 3 Drop Foundation. That is an indie brand, but I guess I wanted to keep it to indie brands that I like <laughs> have had okay i like that brand whoop reverse 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 that sounded bad i love ritual defeat i wanted to leave this video to indie products i like because while i love that brand i do not like that product so like i said earlier um i needed a little bit of a pick-me-up today so i wanted to stick with brands that i know i love and there's still like i haven't used every product in this video like the palette i've never used but i know i love the brand so i think it's gonna be really good the concealer is blended out from mob beauty we're doing blush and bronzer um, this is in shade m20 oh numbers reverse sorry in shade m72 for cream blush and m80 for cream bronzer i've talked about these quite a lot uh, recently i'll leave linked for you the video where i tried these for the first time but when I organically hit pan on something, that means I'm really loving it because I have so many options in my collection when it comes to blush and bronzer that when I am repeatedly using something that without even trying, I'm hitting pan, that really says something. Truly, um, these are just, again, same as the foundation, so natural looking that for day-to-day -day use, I think you would like these if you're somebody that you don't like cake on makeup. I think you would really like these a lot. And it's super fast and easy. I just take this literally the same brush, right, for bronzer. Bronzer? I'm kind of making it bronzer. <laughs> Blush and bronzer. And yeah, I just go over my cheekbone. I don't use very much product either. It's not like I ran through this because you have to layer on 10 times, right? I just do a little couple swirls in the pan and blend out especially the edges of the product and I'll usually even do like a little bit on the sides of my nose just to give it a little bit of like natural shadow you know maybe do my jawline a little bit but it's all the same brush all the same two shades and we end up, ooh, that blush came over a bit too far, that's okay. We end up with something, like I said, I think pretty natural looking and quick and easy. And the fact that it's a brand that cares about making um, sustainable packaging and is pretty clean formula, check out Mob Beauty if you haven't already. I am priming my eyes with the ColourPop Purdy Proof Eye Primer. And I'm using from Electrum Cosmetics, the Midnight Moth Palette. I've had this for a bit and have not used it. I know it's going to be magical. The shimmers always are from this brand, but I just haven't had the chance to try it. And looking at it, I'm like, okay, if this doesn't put me in a better mood, literally nothing will. Literally nothing will because look at it. Look at it. I mean, it's... It's perfection is what it is. So we're going to give it a go. I'm going to start with Nightshade just because that looks to be the lightest matte here. And I do like to set my eyeshadow primer with either translucent powder or usually like a lighter matte eyeshadow shade. Usually I pick a shade that's like light enough that it's not necessarily going to add or detract from the look overall like even if I don't do this like kind of pinky mauve undertone it's light enough that you probably won't even be able to see it by the time we're done but it helps to uh, set the primer I feel like so things don't crease and it just helps me blend the other shadows when I start adding them on but that's me personally um, and then I'm gonna do Patera this kind of like orangey mustardy one. I'm also wearing, I just got from the TikTok shop, a Happy Halloween. Bottom says, Howl's Moving Castle, but it's like Howl's Halloween, if you know Studio Ghibli. Ghibli? Ghibli? I always mess it up. I love those movies. I love anime. So again, this just came in, this hoodie that I ordered. And I was like, you know what? We're going to optimize trying to make ourselves feel better than when we woke up today and 
with the tests and trials that life is throwing my way today and just recently in general. <laughs> So I am putting this on the other corner, but I'm also taking what's left over into the crease. Like I started on the outer corner so that the most pigment would go there. But then I am taking the residual amounts up into the crease as well. Because my plan is to deepen out the outer corner even more. So I will probably like lose a bit of this color in the outer corner as I go over it and darken it. But the fact that I'm doing this first means some of it will like peek out from the outside of that darker shade. It'll help me blend the darker shade. And I'll still have some of it peeking through in my crease up here. And it's blending nicely in the crease, not only because I'm only using the excess pigment left on the brush up there, but also because I had that nightshade bath there. Need a smaller brush, she'll do. Okay, and then I'm gonna take, ooh, I was thinking, Le Lepidoptera. Oh my gosh, I can't say that word. I was thinking this one, but also I'm thinking this, this nocturnal matte could be nice too. Ooh, which one do I do? Okay, split second decision. I'm going nocturnal. Wasn't my original plan. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do that just along the lash line here on the outer corner to give us some depth. This is a thing that I like to do, just a little darkness right on the edge for when I add mascara. I feel like it makes my lashes look a bit fuller than maybe they actually are. And I'll do this a lot when I want my lashes to look fuller um, without wearing some kind of a false lash. So if you don't want to put on a falsie, and I don't mind falsies, but... I don't usually wear them on the daily. It's more of like a special occasion kind of a thing for me, if I'm being honest. Um, that helps a lot. I know Electrum Cosmetic Shimmers don't normally need a glitter primer, so... Oh, now it's time for the best part, the shimmers, but I need to decide like what order I'm putting them in and everything. Hmm. Okay, so since I have more of this like mustardy green, I think I'm gonna do Hecate on the outside. I don't even know if you can see what the color even looks like because it's so shifty that the camera can't pick it up. And then Dead of Night, this more like pressed flaky bluey one on the inside. So again, Hecate, and I'm just gonna try to not cover up that um, green that I put on that nocturnal too much, but kind of run on the lid in the center and above that line. Oh, that's just a sprinkle of goodness. This is more of like a sprinkly topper shade, so I can see some of my bare lid like underneath and through it, but I don't mind that. I kind of think that gives sometimes more of like an ethereal look, which is really pretty. So I've got Hecate on like most of the lid here. And then I'm gonna take Dead of Night just on the most like inner portion here. And I think I'm gonna go on the inner corner with this too, just so it's like a swoop leading into the front portion of the eye. I think that would look really pretty. Yeah, I like that. It's like, instead of a neutral eye with the pop of blue, it's like a murky eye <laughs> with the pop of blue. Oh yeah, that's really pretty in the front portion of the eye. Oh, that's so magical. I'm positive the camera will not pick up just how cool this looks but that's very impressive oh so cool okay and then one more other brush just to like I said put a little of this in the inner corner that is so lovely so pretty oh can you like I'm gonna try I'm gonna try can you see like I know you can see some of the texture especially of Dead of Night, the more like flaky one in the front, but then that's, there is another shimmer all over the lid, Hecate, that is much more fine, reflective. Oh, it's so pretty. Okay, my camera is almost dead, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take Twilight, this purple matte, and I'm gonna use it as like a shadow eyeliner. I'm gonna add mascara and a lip, and I'll be back to show you the final look.
And here is the final look. Like I said, I did go ahead and use Twilight just to add a little bit of shadow liner right across the lash line all the way through. This did the trick. Um, I feel serotonin and I'm going to say Electrum Cosmetics was the indie brand that did that for me. Um, I added the Ciate London Wonderland Mascara. I had to double check, but this is an independently owned British company. Um, and I forgot how much I like this mascara. Sadly, I think from uh, the way it was going when I was applying it, I think I'm almost out of it. I think I'm almost done with that one. Um, and then I wanted to pull that original, one of the original mattes, that yellow out of the eyes a little bit more. So I went ahead and used from the Autumn Trio from Black Moon Cosmetics, their liquid lipstick in the shade Cider is what I'm wearing. So yeah guys, here is the final look. What do you think? Very fall, but like with that pop of blue at the same time, super fun. I, I definitely feel better. Makeup helps me feel better. This part, partly like why I enjoy it so much because it is therapeutic in a way to me. I don't know if any of you feel that way, but um, let me know what you think of the looks. What's your favorite indie brand? What do you do to make yourself feel better when you wake up in a funk? I would love to know in the comments below. Thanks so much if you made it all the way to the end of the video, and I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye!